Hello again guys, uh, today I'm going to show you the difference between this K3 up here and the K5 I've just bought. Uh, I bought a K3 about 3 or 4 months ago, I was more than happy with it. And then I just did a 2000k ride on my GS up to Canberra, I'm down in Victoria. And uh, I've never experienced rain with this helmet. I've never experienced any rain with this helmet and uh, it leaked all along, excuse the audio for a sec, it leaked all, all the way around that seal, um, dripped down through the visor on the inside and it actually fishbowled water because like as you know you don't ride along like this, you ride along almost I'd say like that, right? So you, I filled this up to this white line with water, right? So up to about there and the fish bowl. Now you're probably saying, well, why wouldn't you just stop and um, let the water out? And I did it because as soon as it did that, I knew I wasn't going to keep it. I mean, I will keep it. It'll be my wife's helmet or something, but, uh, and I wanted to see how dramatic this could actually get. So I rode along for about an hour with the water just slish, swishing, with the water swishing in there up to about, don't want to say an inch, but damn close enough to it. Um, those scratches are from me, so ignore that. Um, now, I spoke to a couple of people and they said, oh, maybe it's just your visor's a little misshapen or something, so the water's getting through. Even so, that should be a lot tighter fit on that seal because if you look yeah it just sounds flimsy so i got this uh on sale i've actually found my receipt online it was only 318 i thought i paid more but it was only 318 i think they normally go for about 399 all right so that's a k3 um also these uh the sunglasses flip down thing it's lost its uh, snappiness uh, when you first started using it, it just go dunk and now it's got a little bit of movement and just all the plastics obviously worn in just a bit uh, and these little the I will say these little red things here are removable and replaceable but they do wear down and the helmet just doesn't have the same snap as it did when it was new. So that's the K3. I'm not retiring it. I'll get my wife to wear it or something when she comes for a ride if I can, you know, if she does. And it also has this system. Look, I'm old school. I actually like the D-ring system. This is like that. Okay, and I know it's probably better, but I don't care. I don't like it. Right, so that's that one. And I've heard the new one that's down here, I haven't seen one in person yet, I just took it on reviews and decided to get one. So I'll open up the K5 and we'll have a look. Also excuse the uh, my background, it's not my normal background, but this is my wife's makeup room and uh, it's got the best light in the house at the moment. So Okay. I wasn't actually expecting this because the tracking still said it was in Sydney, not Sydney, sorry, Melbourne. Um, I've sanitized the box and everything, so I'm not at any risk of uh, uh, Corona <laughs> or COVID-19. I don't think I've ever done an unboxing uh, before. Um, I'll, I'll save you the annoyingness. I'll save you all this, I'll just take it out. We'll have a look. Um, alrighty. Now, the sizing chart. The sizing chart recommended I get a, a medium large, but they didn't have a medium large. That's a medium up there, the K3, and I like that, so I just decided to go with the large. So what we get. Now, I paid $489 delivered um, for my AGV K5S Hurricane Black and Red and White in large. 
Um, now I think when they're not on sale, they're about 600, 599, 600, but maybe this just isn't the design people like. So they've just made it cheaper. Hmm. Fog resistant lenses. Now I have never used one of these before. Um, I might I might have to review one of these because I've, I've never uh, actually reviewed one. It, uh, it helps with fog. I've never used one and I've never reviewed one. I probably won't put it on the helmet until I've had a chat with someone to see if they're worth actually putting on. But So I get one of those for free. It's nice. And in there it comes with the stickers and stuff. I'm assume that's a warranty card or something. All our helmets are 100% legal for to, uh, to use on road or track. Just look for either the ECU or the ECE or AS New Zealand markings. So it's Australian standard, you'd hope so. Yeah, it comes in this nice bag. I always end up losing the bags and it really annoys me because they're not. This is actually a nicer quality bag than um, the last one came in. Um, you'd hope so for another two hundred dollars. Put on top. Okay, so Oops. there. <sighs> Little AGV sticker. Um, if anyone wants this, um, I'll, I'll happily send it through the post. If anyone wants that, I'll send it to them for free. Uh, Australia only, though. Okay, okay, guys. And it comes with these little. The green ones, I, I can't remember, I think the different shift points for the visor, but I'll look into that. Also it comes with the big AGV sticker. So again, I haven't seen this, ooh. Okay, so I haven't seen this helmet in person yet. Um, ooh, that's, that's nice. I'm very, I don't know why this one's not a popular, Design, I actually think this is pretty damn, pretty damn nice. Right. I won't take the stickers off yet, but we'll take that off. Oh, jeez, that's strong enough. Ow. Uh, that'll be the warranty card, I think. We don't need no warranty cards. Now, I haven't used a D-ring for probably six, seven months. So... This would be a nice change to go back to a D-ring. I didn't like that snap system thing. Now, um, looks a bit odd. Hmm. Anyway, ah, so that's the K3, that's the K5. Very similar, but also different. <laughs> Because, to my knowledge, these little pads here sit a lot flatter. So when you put the helmet down flat, it doesn't do this thing, because I think the K3 did it too. When you put it down on a flat surface, it would do this rocking back and forth thing. I mean, that doesn't probably matter, but if you put it on your seat of your bike, and I have dropped that helmet off the seat of my bike, Whoa, that is so much lighter than the K3. Let's have a look. Oh, that's nice. Oh, wow. That's noticeably... That, oh, that's, that's nice. That's noticeably better. I can't explain it. Hang on. Yeah. So... This material is a much nicer quality. It's more like a suede sort of nice. The, the stuff inside handles sweat a hell of a lot better as well. And it also has like removable pads in here so you can put microphones and um, hearing like headphones and stuff like that in it. I'm feels a little awkward at the moment because I haven't done much with it yet. But, oh, that's what. Um, 
yeah, there's something about, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> that, oh, that's light years better. So I'm trying this on at the same time that you're, you're seeing it. So I'm just as in awe as, I'm just liking it just as much as you're at the moment. Um, look, there's not, there's a few different things better in this than there is the K3. But uh, that like tornado -y spark thing, that looks like not tendons, but you know like in like your forearm, the, all the muscles that go across. It has that look to it. That's what actually made me like it. It's got the vent in the back here as well. So that cross air that goes through, you can shut that off. So the air sort of gets trapped in there with you. Which is kind of nice. Eyewear compatible. It says eyewear compatible in there. But yeah, I mean, I haven't taken it for a ride yet, obviously, but I don't know, it's, um, it's going to take a little bit getting used to because it it's just such a nice helmet. And it's tighter, but... Hmm, I just like this a lot. I had a K3... I, mean, I had a K3 Valentino Rossi looking one. Um, it's like a fluoro fluoro with 46 and stuff there that's like the old agv logo in the older helmets obviously that's going to be reversed but um yeah the old agv logo is on the side there well it, it they used to have that logo up there that's what i'm saying in a lot of helmets yeah. i'll go for a ride when i get a chance and um we'll test it out these seals here, all the way around, are replaceable from AGV. So if they wear out, they, they can just send you another one. Obviously, you pay for it, but got a, a nose guard, like a little air nose guard. It's got the um, chin, wind chin, the wind chin protector. Um, that the material is just so much better. Um, so I'll do a, I'll put on my K3. I mean, the K3's gone now. I'll never use it ever again. But I don't know, I'm, I'm liking this uh, K5. The helmet shell is actually a mixture of carbon and another plastic product. This is just all um, some form of plastic. Mm, yeah, this is, um, I mean, look, this is just as nice. Feels nicer to get on this one because um, it's not as tight around here, but you want it tight around there. So you get a lot less wind noise, but uh, geez, I definitely made the right position, didn't I? Just to finish up, so the seal on here is absolutely piss weak on the K3. The seal on the AGV, sorry. The seal on the K5 is way nicer, way thicker. Um, I have heard that the, no the wind noise, uh, comparatively, the wind noise, the two is huge difference compared to the K3 and the K5. The K5 is way quieter. Um, the padding inside, the padding inside is uh, way better in the K5. It's just more of a suede material and it's way better for sweat, apparently. Um, the weight difference, I haven't actually really, I, ha I haven't weighed them. I'm sure there's a number of somewhere online of what the, but just this one, when you pick it up, it's, pro it's probably a bit of a placebo effect, I guess, because this one costs more. Uh, but if I just pick them up, even, this is going to sound funny, but when you pick them up from their chin piece here, a more expensive helmet feels different. I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's the material they use on the inside of the chin piece there, but it just feels, you pick it up with a bit more confidence than you do something like this. Preferably, if I didn't know how much they cost, this one's nicer to get on. Uh, but I'm sure this one's going to be a lot better to live with. Because, as I said, I've worn this one in now. I've only had this for three, six months, something like that. I'll, I'll have a look when I actually got it. But this is like three months worth of wear. It, it, definitely three months worth of wear. Um, even though I've owned it for longer. And it just feels... Yeah. I don't know. K5 all around better. Um, this one is nicer to get on. It doesn't pull you around as much when you're getting it on, but outweighing having to put something on, 
and having all the benefits of the K5. I mean, I'm not gonna just throw the K3 away. I mean, I'll, I'll use it when I need to. Um, but yeah, it's just something about this K5. I'll just, I'll just do a loop for you. Hello. So this is the front side, the back, and obviously that side is going to be the same. So I just got this Alpine Star jacket as well. Oh, that's nice. There's something so confident inspiring about expensive gear. I mean, yes, it is nicer to wear, but like that, um, my new Alpine Star jacket down there was $500 and it feels like you're wearing $500. Doesn't feel like I don't, I've never worn on Dainese um, or similar brands. I, I've rode it with a dry rider, full dry rider gear suit that I took to Europe. I've had that for six years and it hasn't let me down, but it just, the older I get, the more it's just starting to feel like a coat that I'm wearing and not an actual jacket. Um, I think maybe I've lost weight or something, but it's just starting to feel like a coat. Wow, but that Alpine Star jacket, it just feels like you're in it. But anyway, that's that's another video if you want to see the Alpine Star review. But yeah, it's just I'm very happy. It's just an all-around better, better instrument. Um, I've done a lot of motor vlogging in the past. If you go back down through my videos, I've done a lot of it. It's a lot of it's getting old now, like three or four years old. But I had a daughter, so I sold one of my I sold my bike when I had my daughter, and then so the GoPro wasn't needed, so I got rid of the GoPro, and um, it all just started to filter away, like all the stuff I had for that hobby or that interest. I do want to get back into motor vlogging, but I don't want to spend say five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on stuff if no one's interested. You know, I mean. A couple of my new videos went quite well. Um, well, you know, in my opinion, they went quite well. Uh, like three and a half thousand views on my GS video. Uh, about three and a half thousand views on my GS video, which is nice. I've never had a response like that, I think, because it was just a popular topic. And there's so many motor vloggers out there that I, mine will just probably get lost in translation or, or lost in the pile of uh, motor vloggers, but if anyone would actually sit there and watch it and just have it on in the background, because that's what I do with motor vlog stuff, I just, uh, uh, the Road with Tom, Biker Bits, um, I just have those on in the background, uh, and it's just nice to listen to them, you know? You feel like you're going for a ride even though you're not. So yeah, if anyone would actually watch that content, I would happily invest in getting a GoPro and all, and uh, one of the new GoPros, even though I want to use a GoPro Hero 4, but that's like, mm, no, that's old now, and you want the new stuff. So um, I'd have to go and get a GoPro and actually do some motor vlogging stuff um, if it was actually going to get watched. I mean, to me, 150 views is making me worth it because to anyone who's popular would see it as a, a uh, anyone who was a popular motor vlogger like Riding with Tom, for instance, he's getting regularly... 17,000, 100,000, 200,000 views. So if he gets 180 views, he's like, oh, this video is bad. But I see it as there's 180 people or 150 or 100 views or whatever that have sat down and watched your video in entirety. In, in watched your video in its entirety. And um, I really respect that people put the effort into watching it. I know they're just sitting there watching it, but I respect it and I make my best effort to make it good. So yeah, if anyone would actually watch it, please let me know, um, especially Australian guys, because I this isn't my main focus, uh, YouTube stuff, but I just like to do it. Um, helps with anxiety. I love editing footage. Um, I wouldn't mind doing it as a career, actually. I mean, the filming part of it, yeah, but editing footage would be a great career. I would love that. I love doing that for somebody. But um, yeah, so if anyone would actually watch it, I'll do it, uh, even though I get 100 views. There's 100 people that have sat down and actually enjoyed it. And like people don't realize it does take quite a while to edit a video because this is 
probably I don't know, 30 minutes worth of video, it'll get cut down to about six minutes and it'll take me two hours to edit. So, you know, there's a fair bit of effort into it, but I'd like to do it. Um, when my daughter's asleep, that's the only chance I get to do these sort of things. Uh, you might have heard her sucking, but that's how she goes down. She sucks for a bit and then she goes to sleep. So yeah, if anyone would want to see it, please let me know, please. Uh, Cause I need an excuse to go and buy one. <laughs> All right. If you have any questions about the K3 or the K5, I'll be in the comments for you. All right.